Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are doing absolutely fine. So if you all have actually been following my channel for a while, you would know that I've actually vlogged my full architecture college experience from first year to fourth year, which is till date. I've talked about how I prepare for juries, how is my daily life and how do I prepare for projects and what you should do when you get into first year, what things you should keep in mind, etc, etc, etc. I think when you start actually researching about what is the college culture in architecture colleges in general, like especially when you haven't entered any architecture college as such, you would hear a lot of things about, you know, having a lot of toxicness, which is uh, sleepless nights and a lot of work pressure, no social life. And a lot of people then can feel really confused whether they really want to pursue the field or not. Through this video, I want to talk about this dark side of architecture college that people have written a lot about online and I want to give you all the real time perspective as a fourth year architecture student. What do I think about it? And if you are, you are not into architecture college, you're thinking of getting into it or you are in the first year, how you can tackle such situations if you end up facing any. And before starting this video, I also want to give you all a disclaimer that in this video, I'm talking with my own perspective. So this is a very individual perspective. You can take this video and understand what I'm talking about and then see if it's actually applicable for you or what do you think about it. Whenever you are taking a decision, don't base it on one person's opinion. Accumulate all the data and knowledge you can have and then choose one thing in life. Yeah, so if that thing is clear, let's move ahead with the video. The orientation, they told me that architecture is one of the most hardest professions to study for. And I was like, well, is it? Because I never really researched a lot about architecture. I just saw people pursuing it and I liked it. And that is why I ended up, you know, getting into a college and stuff. So that was actually my experience of how I actually got into architecture college. So I got rather very unprepared and I had the first hand experiences I did not hear much from people, although whenever they told me, I just took it as, you know, um, because life or anyways has its own problems. If I get into college, I will also have my own problems, so I'll tackle them. That was how I tackled them, you know, the reality of college life anyways. But there's a really big running rumor in architecture that uh, sleep is for the week and you don't get to sleep whatsoever and your sleep cycle is wrecked. Well, I think a lot of it is actually true. I cannot deny the fact that there are a lot of days when I don't sleep and especially before the main submission, I don't sleep for at least two days or three days to max. On, on the other days, I'm not counting where I'm actually sleeping at 4 a.m. at night or something like that. But I've also seen a lot of people in this scenario who cannot whatsoever, you know, sleep late they will wake up early and do their work regardless of whatever time it is and somehow they have based their body clock ki, you know they get the work done the whole day and then sleep at night and then get up early in the morning and then again finish their work and go and attend college so i also have friends like that but i cannot deny the fact that late night working culture is extremely glorified in architecture college and i also think that I also have fr my friends in engineering and they also have this glorification of late night working culture. But uh, as being an architecture student, I can tell you that is something that totally happens in college life. And especially I think you'll face it more if you end up going to a hostel. Since I am a day scholar, a lot of my day I can decide what I want to do. But I think if you are in the hostel, a lot of times your peers around you kind of decide what you're going to do the whole day because you're living together and stuff. I cannot deny the fact that uh, sleep is kind of wrecked, <laughs> but uh, I think if you're very much sure about what you want and how you want to pursue your education, that is you don't want to stay up late, you want to get up early, you have an X, Y, Z things to do, then you can do it. It is a lot about your own decide, you like what you decide to do rather than what other people will tell you to do. Definitely people will try to influence you to stay up at night. That's just how the way it is. That's how we do it. But I am telling you, I don't recommend any of my juniors to stay up at night. If that is how you roll, then that's great because I've always been a night owl. So that was how I lived. So that's how my life is going on. But I don't recommend anyone to do it or I don't force anyone to do it. So yeah, I think that is the reality of the late night jazz. 
but uh, i think i've also talked about this in my previous video but uh, yeah i don't think you have to stress a lot about sleeping late if you are sure about it then i think you will just do things according to your own and there's nothing to worry about another point people actually ask me a lot is that do you have a social life after starting college are you able to pursue the extra curricular activities that you have been doing till class 12th and stuff and let me tell you guys i'm pursuing youtube with my full time architecture degree and not every time i am fully you know on my schedule of posting every week but i can't deny the fact that i'm able to do it with my uh, you know college degree so it is not like you don't have a social life but if you have other priorities also then you really have to sit down with yourself and realize that yes my life is beyond college and i also have to give it equal importance because the thing is that i remember my mom telling me this when i used to be so swayed away with academics that i did nothing other than academics i would just come home and study go there and study come home and study go there and study and even then i'm telling you i never got good marks like i'm frank i studied a lot but i never got good marks until i switched my you know thinking with the fact that my education is just a part of my life and not my life and i think it you know is applicable in whatever you end up studying in and that is when i started focusing more on youtube and focusing more on other things and I, that in turn helped me to develop more as a person so yes for a long time when you are actually preparing for your finals and stuff you don't get time to go out and you're really focusing on your design because that takes up a lot of time you're researching not just about design but also about history about the math behind it about construction details about you know the software that you're using it will take up a lot of time but i think i can give that time a month probably a month you will be really engrossed in your studies and if you really love design you will enjoy the degree rather than taking it as a pressure so even if you don't meet your friends outside your college life it will be okay for you but if you really don't like it and you're getting into it and then you feel like you don't have a life it will be much harder for you and also i think for the fact that i am a day scholar so i get to come come back home and have my friends and my family here and then go back to college and you know try to uh, mingle with my college friends i'm not promoting you to be a day scholar but just telling you with my own opinion in general i've seen that i get to interact with people more but i have also seen people having huge friend circles in college and really enjoying their social life and enjoying the college culture because architecture is a lot about collaborating with people when you start collaborating with people you find new hobbies new interests and you end up pursuing that too and generally it sometimes collides with design so it's easy to pursue along with your education so if you're into sports also and stuff i think if you have your priorities straight and you have kind of made your timetable like i just mentioned previously you will be able to pursue it just i think when it is the finals time or when you're actually preparing for your juries i don't think you'll be able to do it so yeah that should be kept in mind another point people usually ask is how expensive is pursuing architecture as a degree especially when the degree is a 5 year long degree I can't deny the fact that it is expensive and uh, one of my major priorities when I was looking for colleges in 2019 was that first of all I was aware about the amount of money I could spend for 5 years so I was looking for colleges where I could uh, practically actually give their fees and then eventually also see about the accoms and stuff whether I want to go to a place where I live in a hostel or do I want to be a day scholar and stuff and i have seen people in private colleges paying a lot more than what i am paying in my college and i have also seen people getting scholarships and paying less than what i am paying and also in general also a few colleges like jj have really less fees so you can practically afford it it does not make architecture education very expensive like it is around india but i think there are a lot of facets to this uh, you know architecture education being expensive it's not just the fees if we keep the fees aside even the stationery and the stuff is really expensive and the gadgets that you need but here i think i'll give you all a tip that i have experienced throughout my four year journey i am not very big on stationery and a lot of times when you are in first year second year they give you a huge list of stationery that you have to buy let me tell you at that time really think whether you want to have specific things or not i'm not telling you to disregard the essentials like t scales or triangular scales and stuff 
but there are a few pens and pencils and everything they force you to buy and then just think about it whether it is really important for you or not for me i'm telling you i didn't buy a lot of things i just buy the things that was important and then i asked a lot of people to give me their old stuff and everything and i used to use that and i'm telling you everything is all right i'm still using them and i saved up a lot of money and even when i was taking prints i would make sure to find like the shop which is nearby my college that generally gives you cheaper prints than if i go and you know search around my society because there a3 a2 prints nobody takes so the prints uh, price is exponentially high but yeah i cannot deny that prints are really expensive and even model making is really expensive but what i have seen is that generally after jewelry people like throw off their stuff they they literally throw it off and they don't use it i generally me and my friends actually we gather a lot of things a lot of raw materials and everything that we can use a lot of pens raw materials uh, mount board and these uh, you know trees and everything that we use we just use it later on so we save a lot of money because of that i think uh, you have to be frugal in that sense where you are able to save up money and also when you are looking for colleges be uh, self aware that this is my budget this is what i can look into and then start looking for colleges i think it becomes very easy like that The last point that I want to cover in this video is placements after architecture. What are the placements after B. Arc? Now, if you're looking into engineering colleges as such, you generally have companies coming over there, and they provide you jobs, and you just have to sit for interviews, and you know you have to do the test and stuff. Um, but it's not like that in architecture colleges. There's no compulsion that your college will have placements as such. In my college, there's no placement. I do know a few private colleges that provide you placement, and I think IITs and SPAs do provide placement after B Arc. I don't know, but I am definitely sure after M Arc, that is Masters in Architecture, you do get placement options in the college itself. But I know for a lot of my friends, we don't have placement options in college. So practically, after college, we have to look for our own jobs. So if you don't find this situation favorable I don't think you should be pursuing architecture because you don't have college placement um, you know support as such but uh, that is something we are prepared for since the start because a lot of things we are not taught so we have to learn it from our seniors we have to learn it from our professors like as in after class we go and ask them and they tell us their tips and then we understand and we try to pursue the situation even when we are like in our internship procedure right now so we didn't have anybody coming to us for internships we had to go basically out there in the market and you know talk to our friends our relatives if anybody knows any office is there we can go and contact or just go around and ask people for internship options that kind of prepares you i don't know i'm not in fifth year i haven't graduated so i don't know what i can suggest you all in this but as a fourth year student i can tell you that i am mentally prepared that after fifth year i have to go and look for my own job and the one best thing about architecture college is that if you have good rapport with your seniors and your friends in general a lot of us we help each other to get into uh, office as such and that's how we kind of roll so if you're looking for good placement options security and stuff then i think engineering is way better because that's where you get such college placements and not in architecture but i do know that even during placements in you know even in the internship procedure we are uh, like a few of us when we had a few worries we would go to our professors and ask them if you can suggest a few offices where we can apply they really came forward and helped us so there was no formal help that we got but we did get a lot of informal help from our friends and our professors as such so that is the reality of placement we are somehow prepared from first year that we will have to find our own things and that's how we roll actually and that is the reality about placements in architecture colleges especially in biarc i hope i was able to be as raw as possible and talk you through all the queries that you all generally have about architecture colleges there are a lot of things that are a little more much more harder when you are pursuing architecture as a profession but i think that uh, because i always wanted to study design and i don't think i was good in any other subject that is why a lot of the times i'm able to do things easily because i think i like what i'm doing 
and i would also like to suggest you all this thing if you're getting into architecture or any other profession in general especially in the college life i can't talk about profession right now because i am not a working professional at the moment but if you actually enjoy and you think you will enjoy that i think it gets much more easier and don't worry you guys can comment down below if you guys have any other questions and queries always remember that the things are always hard but it's your perspective that can change the game so yeah do tell me in the comments what do you all think about this video i shall see you guys in the next video bye bye